Hi, it's Marcus from Vaden here with another Vaden Tips video. This week we're going to go back to basics and just take a look at how the basic vertical and horizontal layouts work. We're going to take a look at things like setting margins, spacing, sizing, alignment, justification, all that good stuff. So by the end of this video you'll be able to kind of use the basic layouts to build essentially any kind of layout that you need in your application. So let's jump right into code and get going. Okay, so my app here is a Vaden Flow application with an empty route mapped to a vertical layout. This uh, vertical layout has one component inside of it, a horizontal layout that in turn contains three buttons uh, created with this create button helper, which creates a new button, adds the primary theme variant to it and returns it. And what we can see then is that we have three buttons here horizontally uh, inside of this horizontal layout. I've added a little bit, bit of CSS here, adding a one pixel border around the layouts just to make it a little bit more apparent to us what's happening when we change some parameters on the layouts. All right, so let's start with looking at the very basic like uh, margin spacing and padding, how those work. So with our layout here, the way we can change those is by going into the layout and then calling set, let's start with padding. So if we set padding to true, what that will give us is some space around the inner edge of the layout. So that will mean that the edge of the layout will not touch the content here. Instead, we have some space all the way around here on the inside. Now, if we instead were to change this to margin, like this, what will happen instead, that space will be on the outside of the layout. So now you'll see that instead we have more space here uh, to the side and to the bottom of the layout here and to the top. And finally, we can call set uh, spacing, which is the space between components. It's true by default. So uh, when you create a new vertical or horizontal layout, it's always true. And you can see that we have some space between the components here, but sometimes you want to turn it off and you can do that by passing false into set spacing. And what will happen then is that this space will disappear and our buttons will kind of get smushed all the way together. All right, next up sizing. So right now you can see that this layout here is only as big as it needs to be to contain the components that we have inside of it. Likewise, the parent vertical layout, our view essentially, is only as tall as needed for this. So we can go ahead and, and change some of these. So for, for instance, in uh, this case, I'm gonna make the layout full width so that we can take a look at some of the flex attributes and how we distribute components uh, within this layout. So we'll call layout dot set width and we can set a width to say 100% would be what we want here, but there's a shorthand for that. So set width full, and that will essentially set the full width. If we let that reload, we should see that the layout now comes all the way here to the edge. Also, I'll set a height to it just so that we have some uh, horizontal space there where we can see how, uh, how the alignment works on that cross axis. So we'll call layout dot set width, or sorry, set height, and we're going to put it to 200 pixels like that. And that'll give us a little bit more space. Now, both vertical and horizontal layout are essentially abstractions over the CSS Flexbox layout. That means that the primary axis that we are working on in horizontal layout is the horizontal axis, and for a vertical layout, it would be the uh, vertical axis. So. The way we distribute components or align them along this main axis is through justify content. So we'll start by looking at that. So we'll again get our layout and then we'll call set justify content mode. And we can use the enumeration here to see different values. So we could say that we want space around each element inside of it. And what that will do is that we'll have each component will have an equal uh, space before and after it. Uh, here in the middle, you see essentially we have two 
equal sized spaces because both buttons have this one has one space behind it and this one has one space before it. Now here's one uh, thing that you might run into. So right now we have spacing set to false. If we were to remove this, uh, this will look a little bit weird. It doesn't ex uh, work ex exactly like we might expect it to. You can see that now everything gets pushed over here because there's essentially an invisible spacing element uh, inserted there by Vaadin. So that's just something to uh, kind of keep in mind when you're working with this. Uh, some other modes that might be helpful is setting space between components. So instead of having equal space bef uh, in front and behind every element, we'll have equal space between each element. So in this case, we have equal space here and here so that they're equally distant from each other. And finally, we could use center, which will center the components uh, on that uh, main axis like this. All right, so justify content places the components along the main axis, which in our case here is the horizontal axis. Uh, if we want to place them along this cross axis, uh, what we can use is align items. So we'll again get the layout, set align items, and then we can use alignment dot and then choose different options. So if we wanted to do something very common, center things, we could set both justify and align to center. And what we'll see happen right now is that we get all the content right smack in the middle of our layout, which is very handy at times. By default, it's set the start, which is all the way to the top here of the cross axis. We could set it to the end if we wanted it here at the end. And you can see that puts, it, puts them here all the way on the bottom. Now, if we reset this uh, for a while, so we'll have this set to start. And I'm actually going to go and add one component here. So I'll create a new text field with a caption like this. And I'll go ahead and import this. Let's go ahead and import. Yep. Just to show you another kind of gotcha that you might run into, especially with text fields uh, in particular is that things doesn't don't look that great right now. You have essentially everything is is pushed all the way to the top here, to the start of this cross axis. But that means that when you're looking at this visually, it doesn't look like things are aligned. So what we can do then is use uh, baseline alignment to make sure that the baseline of all, all of these components are aligned. So essentially what that means is that we're still basically on the top here uh, or in the start of this cross axis, but they're all now aligned along their baseline, which looks a lot nicer. Now the same here works the other way around if we change from a horizontal layout to a vertical layout. So if we change this to a vertical layout, you'll see that first of all, we'll have the components now on top of each other as opposed to next to each other. Uh, the centering that we have here for justify content doesn't work because again, this is now set to 200 pixels tall. So we actually want to have it full height. So if we want to set a layout to full height and full width, we can use the shorthand set size full. And if we call set size full, uh, let's take a look at what happens here. So I'm only calling set size full on this layout here. And that doesn't really make a whole big difference because what that actually does is it sets the height of this internal layout to the same height as kind of the available space within this wrapping layout. So the view vertical layout here. So for that to actually have any kind of effect, we actually need to call set size full on the parent layout as well, essentially giving it enough space where it can uh, expand like that. So now we can see that they are justified here uh, uh, in the center. All right, so we'll uh, can go ahead and actually remove this right now and kind of go back to the alignment here. So by default, we want to have everything aligned to the start. So in, in case of the vertical layout, the start means uh, the beginning here, all the way to the all the way to the left. But we can override the alignment also for individual components. So if I wanted to 
say, have this text field all the way to the end here, I can call layout dot set align self and then I'll use again the alignment uh, helper here I'll select end and then I need to tell which component should be aligned in this case that will be the text field all right let's see well actually I'll, I'll use the last here but because I already extracted that out so I'll use last and that should get this button put all the way here to the side There you go. So you can set the alignment both for all the components or you can set kind of override the alignment for one individual component if you want to. Now let's go back to the horizontal layout just so we have uh, so we can take a look at two two more things I want to show. So we'll go back to horizontal layout here. I'll remove the text field. We don't need that for this. I want to cover another Kind of common use case that you might uh, run run across in in your applications. So we have our we have our layout here, and what we want to do is we want to have a gap between some components so that this button, for instance, will be all the way here to the side. That would kind of be very normal in a header. You have a logout button or a avatar or something here to the side, and then you have some menu items here. Now there are a couple of different ways you could do that. But the one we're going to take a look at is using the margin to kind of push that component all the way to the side. Now, in order for that to work, again, we need to make sure that the layout spans all the way there. In this case, you can see right now because it's it's got the border, it actually ends here. So we can't just use a margin to push the component all the way outside of it, the layout. So we need to start by uh, setting the layouts width to full. So we'll grab this last element here and we're gonna get the styles we're gonna set a new style on it the margin left and the value we want here is auto which will essentially push it as far as it can go in that direction so let's take a look at what that looks like in in practice yeah so now we have essentially this button getting pushed all the way by this automatically sized margin here. So we could add more components here uh, and it would still kind of leave a gap between the last, last component and the final component here. Like that. All right, um, then let's take a look at flexing items. So how do we distribute space, like extra space between components? So I'll remove this uh, set style here, and instead we'll take a look at using flex. So we can call uh, layout dot set flex grow, and we can say that we want one specific component to take up kind of all the extra space here, and we can tell that we want the last component to take up all the extra space. Essentially, it'll distribute this extra space, give it to this button, and expand it all the way, which will look like this. Actually, I'll go ahead and turn the spacing back on so it's a little bit easier to see where one component ends and one starts. So you can see now we have this button takes up all the extra space that's not needed by these. Um, let's actually extract another one of these components out so we'll have other is equal to a create button and we'll put it in here and what we can do then is we'll say that other should get twice the size of the extra space than the last one so essentially this will mean that whatever space is not used by the rest of the buttons will get uh, distributed so that this button gets two parts of it, and this button gets one part of it. Now that's more of a advanced use case. The by far most common use case is that you just want to expand one component, and it's such a use uh, kind of often used thing that there is a shorthand for it called expand. So you can just say that I want to expand the other component here, and what that will do is do the same as setting that flex grow to one. So in this case this button will just eat up all the extra space that we have.
All right, so those are the basics of on layouts. We have ways of defining the space between components, inside the layout, outside the layout. We can size the layouts. We can align items uh, along the cross axis. We can justify them along the main axis. And we can use flex to determine how much space each component should get. Now, as the last thing, what I want to do here is just show how we can combine all of these things that we just learned into building a uh, actual layout. So we're going to build something that has a header with some buttons. We can actually reuse the layout we have here. Then we'll have a sidebar with some buttons kind of simulating a nav bar of sorts and then a main area where we'll have a, a grid just taking up the rest of the space. So very kind of simple basic layout. But once you understand how you can combine these concepts into building uh, kind of composite layouts, then that kind of unlocks the possibility of building any any and all kinds of layouts. All right, so um, let's go ahead and rename our layout to header. And we'll give the header full width. And let's remove this for now and get back to that in just a second. Mm. Actually, I'll clean up this too, just to kind of keep the code focused on what we need. So the initial base layout that we have here is the vertical layout, which is our view, meaning that anything we put inside the view will get kind of placed uh, on the bottom of the previous element. So that's good. We want the header to be on top of the rest of the component. Now, the main part of the layout will have a sidebar and a main content next to each other. So that means we need another uh, horizontal layout. So we'll create a new one, call it content. It'll be a new horizontal layout. The content should be full width again. So we'll set that set with full. Then we need a vertical layout for the sidebar where we can show buttons. So let's create a new uh, or Let's call it nav is equal to a new vertical layout. And we'll fill this with buttons as well, just so we have some placeholder data there. So we'll just call create button a couple of times here like that. So we have something to put in there. The nav bar, we want to have 200 pixels wide. So we'll call nav.set with 200 pixels. And then finally, we'll have a grid that takes up the kind of main space here. So we'll create a grid, a new button grid. And the bean type will be person.class. It's just something I have in my, in my project here. So we get the right columns. That's not important for the actual layouting. The data type you would have is depending on, on your project. All right, so let's start putting together these layouts. So on the top level, what we call to add is essentially two components. We have two components on top of each other. We have the header, and then we have the content. Okay, and then what does the content in, uh, have inside of that? So the content we call add, and then the content has the nav bar and the grid. So we'll add the nav and the grid. So let's go ahead and save this for now, just kind of take a quick look at what we have so far. Okay, so that already looks pretty good. Uh, we have the basics up here, we have the header, we have the sidebar, we have the grid here. Uh, now we want this part here to actually take up all the space here. So if we have a lot of data in the grid, we can utilize all the space. So let's go ahead and call expand. So we're calling expand on the main view here. And we're going to expand content. And that's going to set the flex grow to one and allow this part of the layout to grow like that. Now, the final thing we want to do here is actually make this grid use up all the space that's available there. So let's go here and call grid not set height full. And hopefully, that will give us the result that we want. 
All right, there we go. So now the grid comes all the way to the bottom. We have the sidebar here and we have the top bar. All right, so there you have it. Bottom basic layouts, vertical layout and horizontal layout. I hope this was a useful video for you, especially if you're new to Vaadin and just starting to figure out how to build apps uh, using those basic layouts. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. If you have ideas for new videos that you want me to do, uh, let us know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.